In this one, we're making another viewport compositing filter that I like to call pixel stretching, but if you're looking for this effect elsewhere, it's usually called pixel sorting. According to the internet, pixel sorting is usually achieved using code that selects individual pixels and then changes their position based on some criteria like saturation or brightness. Visually, it results in a glitchy, smeared pixel sort of look that I really like. Today we're going to use Blender to make a similar filter that can be used on our pictures, videos, and textures. If you don't want to follow along, you can buy this effect on my Gumroad. I made it easy to use and easy to customize. Here's a summary of the steps we'll be taking. First, to find a picture or video that you want to use this effect on, we're going to make a plane and put that image on it. Then we're going to make a series of nodes that let us pixelate our image. The important node that makes this possible is the math node set to snap, which lets us choose how many pixels we want going vertically and horizontally. Once we have that, we'll turn it into a node group because we're going to use the same setup twice. So what we're going to do is use a noise texture to affect the pixelator we just made so that the amount of pixels we have going up and down will be a little more random. Then we'll use a second noise texture as a mask to blend between the distorted pixelator and another one that is unaffected. We just have to make sure the noise textures we're using are being pixelated too. Otherwise, the distortion will look too smooth. And that's the basic effect. After that, we'll talk about how to use and modify it. All right, let's get started. Okay, so here we are in Blender version 2.92. I just have a camera in my scene and that's it. And I should mention that I am going to be using Node Wrangler for this. You can uh, enable that by going to Preferences right here, Add-ons, and then turning Node Wrangler on. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, Shift-A to add in a plane. And then I'm going to reset our camera's location with Alt-G and Alt-R like that. And you can just drag it up a little and look through your camera with zero on the numpad. And I'm just going to move my camera on the Z axis until the plane fills the screen like that. Next, we're going to switch over to the shading workspace right here. And I'm just going to look through my camera again with zero. And I'm going to turn off the gizmos and stuff in the overlays with these two buttons right here. All right, so now we can see our plane through the camera. We're just going to select our plane and add a new material over here. And this is what we have right now. We don't really need the principled BSDF setup, so I'm just going to delete that and add in an image texture. And you can just plug that directly in here. So in here, you can add any you know image or video or whatever you want. I have a still image, so I'm going to load that up and put that in here. All right, and I want this to fill the screen. You can see right now it's kind of being stretched. Um, and so to make that not happen, we're going to bring in a texture coordinate right here, and we're just going to plug window. And that'll make it so it matches the size of our camera right here. And if yours is being stretched at all, just make sure that in output properties, these dimensions match the dimensions of your image. You can see that when I move it, it's going to stretch like that. This effect will also work with any of these other texture coordinates. I usually uh, either use window or I use UV like that. I'm going to start off with window though. So now that we have this loaded in here, I'm going to get started on the pixelator, um, which if you don't want to make this, you can actually download for free. I have a free pack of node groups uh, on Gumroad and you can find a pixelator there. But for this video, I'm going to be making it from scratch. Um, and it's not too hard. So what we're going to be doing is affecting our texture coordinate directly. And first thing we're going to do is bring in a separate XYZ like that. And I'm going to bring in a combine XYZ right here. And this is just a two dimensional texture. So we don't really need to worry about the Z, um, just the X and the Y. And right now, nothing is really looking different. We're just separating it and then putting it back together. What we're really going to be doing is putting nodes in between these. So we're going to separate them, affect them, and then put them back together. And the node that we're going to be using for that is just a math node, but we're going to set it to snap, which is over here somewhere, right there. And we can just drop that in right here. So right now, our x-axis is going from 0 to 1. And if we look at it after the snap node, you can see it's two pieces. So what this is doing is creating a solid region uh, every 0.5. So if we set this to 0.25, you know, we have one going from 0 to 0.25, and then the next 0.25, we have another solid region, and then another and another. Easy way to decide how many regions you want right here is with another math node. So I'm just going to duplicate this, and I'm going to set this to divide. So we can just put one on the top right there, and however many bars or pixels we want horizontally, um, we can use that for the bottom number. So if I want four, I can plug this in right here 
and it'll be the same. There will be four. Um, I can change this to three for three bars or 10 for 10 bars like that. So this is how we're going to be controlling our resolution. So we can just make another snap node, duplicate it, and use that for the Y right there. And we can use this same math node for the increment there. And now when we look at it combined, you can see it's pixelated now. And we can control our resolution with this right here. But you can see these are rectangular, so we do have to address that. Um, if we want this to be square, what we have to do is change one of these more than the other, like that. And there's actually an easy way to do this. All you have to know is the resolution of your screen. And then when you divide the length from the width, you get the aspect ratio. So we'll do that. I'm just going to create a few value nodes over here. This is going to be for our resolution. So I'll just put 10 in there. And now I know we have 10 up and 10 across. And then I'm going to create two more. And it's going to be our length and our width. I know mine is a uh, 1920 by 1080. So I'll do uh, 1080 is up and 1920, that's gonna be our width. And I'm going to be modifying the X. So I'm going to duplicate this math node and set it to multiply and just put it right here. So it's going into the increment right there. And if we set this to one, it'll be the same. And we can just mess with it a little to see like, do we want it bigger or smaller? It looks like what we want to do is make this smaller to make them more square. So what we can do is just duplicate this divide node. And um, because we know we want the number to be smaller, we are going to put our smaller number on top. So 1080 will be on top and 1920 will be on the bottom. And we can just plug that into the value of the multiply node right here. And that should make everything square. So now we know that this resolution is uh, going to be our height right here, uh, which is pretty normal when you talk about resolution. People say 1080, that means 1080 pixels going up and down. And if we plug this into our image right here and view it, we can see it's already pixelating and we can adjust the resolution right here. Uh, one thing we do want to be able to do, though, is adjust our snap values. So the way we're going to do that is just adding a few more nodes in here. Uh, I'm just going to duplicate this math node, and we're just going to set it to add. And I'm just going to change both of these numbers to zero. And we're going to put these between the divide and the increment slot right there. So you can see because it's set to zero, nothing will happen. If I change it, it'll adjust how many pixels we have going up and down like that. And I'm going to use this for both the X and the Y. So now this is working for window, but you can see if we change this to UV, it's going to break a little, it's going to stretch. So what you can do is either change the scale of your plane right here until it fits. An easy way to do that, again, is just knowing your resolution right here. It looks like I would need the Y to be smaller, so you can just do the same thing we did before. Put your smaller resolution, which is the Y, first, like that, and then divide it by your bigger one, and that will make the correct resolution in there. But if you want to do this with nodes, there's a different way of handling that. So what I'm going to do is plug our window in, and I'm going to create a mix RGB right there, um, and we can plug a window into one and UV into the other. And now we can switch between UV and window right here, but we just have to adjust the UV coordinates to uh, change the shape of this plane to be the correct size. Uh, so once again, we're just going to do the same thing we did with our resolution right here. And I'm just going to drag in a, uh, a mapping node right here and use that for the UV. And we just need to change the Y right here. It looks like we're going to be bringing the Y up. But you can see we only have one plug right here for the scale. And we need three uh, to use these separately. So to do that, you need a combine XYZ right there. And I'm just going to change all these to one so that they match our scale. You can plug it in. And nothing should happen because these are the same right now. And once again, I need this Y value to be bigger. So I know that I need our bigger of the two resolutions uh, on top when we divide it. So I'll plug 1920 into the top and 1080 into the bottom, and then plug that into the Y, and it should work fine now. 
And now we can just use this to switch between uh, our window and UV coordinates like that. So now that we have this and it's working for UV and for window, uh, we just need to group this up. So I'm just going to add some reroute nodes right here. And I just did that with a uh, shift and right click and you can drag like that and it creates these reroutes. So what I'm going to do is just select everything except for our image. And you wanna grab those reroute nodes too, like that. And with all those selected, you can just hit control G and then you can hit either tab to exit or there's a little arrow up here too that you can use to exit. And so now everything is controlled with this node group right here. Um, and this is important because um, we want to use this setup twice and this will just make it easier to reuse, but we have to uh, do a little setup. So I'm gonna go back in here, you can click on it, hit tab. And what I want to do is rename some of these. So you can hit N when you're in here to open up the side panel. And I just need to rename some of these. So, so I know this first one is going to be our UV. This one is going to be a uh, window. And now I can just drag this empty one right here to other inputs that I want. So I'm going to use one for the factor right here to switch between our uh, UV and our window coordinates. So I'm just going to name this switch. And you can also duplicate this and bring it around if you want to get closer. And I'm going to use this for the uh, X snap, and this is going to be the Y snap right there. Okay, so from the outside, now we have some controls. And if we want, we can duplicate this and bring it around too, which is nice. So what we're going to do is change this Y snap value. But instead of just changing it directly like this, we're going to plug a texture in here. So I'm going to hit Control A and add in a noise texture right here. So what we're going to do is plug this into the Y snap value right here. And immediately you can tell this is kind of breaking it. I'm going to plug the window texture in there. And another thing we can do is change the strength with a math node set to multiply. So if we change the multiply to zero, um, that's unaffected, completely unaffected. I'm just gonna change our resolution up to like 64 or something like that. So when our multiply is set to zero, you can see it's unaffected. And when we move it up slowly, it becomes more affected like that. So that's how we're going to control the strength right there. But you can see it's pretty like smooth. And so if you don't want it to be smooth, which I don't, um, you're going to need to pixelate this noise texture also, which is actually really easy because we have this node group now. So we can just duplicate that right here and just put it right before our noise texture. You just want to make sure that you plug in the UV and the window like that so we can switch it. And we already have these value nodes right here and we can plug these directly in to our resolution, our height, our width so that both of these have the same value. And now when we look at our noise texture, it's hard to tell, but it is pixelated in there. Um, an easier way to uh, control your noise texture too is with a map range. So I'm going to take that and just put it in between the noise texture and the multiply. And you can change this from min to move the black around if you want to increase the black. And you can see it is definitely pixelated. And you can see what that's doing to our, uh, our texture coordinate. You can see it's not as smooth anymore. It's pixelated, but some of the noise is coming through also. And when we look at our image, um, you can see it's a little more distorted too, which is cool. We can distort it even more with this if we want. But what I want to do, instead of it being uh, cloudy like this, I just want it to be um, only up and down. So to do that, we can just separate the X, Y, and Z with a separate X, Y, Z node right there. And we're only going to be using the X. And you can see that's just going to split it up and down. If you want this to be uh, left and right, you can use the Y instead like that. But I want to use the X. And when we move the scale up, you can see at a certain point, it just starts to look more random and each band, each column looks different like that. So I'm just gonna set this to something high like 500 or something like that. And I actually don't wanna be using our map range for this. And we can just look at our image now and you can see exactly what that's doing. We set it to zero and move it up slightly. And it's just kind of splitting each row of pixels apart like that. And if you're getting any of these weird uh, artifacts between the pixels, uh, what you can do is just change this from linear to closest and it should clear that up. 
but I don't necessarily want to distort this whole thing at once. I want some parts to be unaffected. What we can do is mix our, um, our distorted pixelator right here with our unaffected one over here. And we can do that with a mix RGB. And I'll just plug this in right here. You can just plug that into, I'll plug that into the second one. And this one over here will plug into color one like that. So now if we set this to zero, this will be completely unaffected because it's using our unaffected pixel group right there. And if we turn this all the way up, it's using this one, which is completely distorted. So we can uh, use a texture to control this also, and that's going to be like a mask. So what I'm going to do is just use another noise texture for this. And we also want that to be pixelated. So make sure you plug the same uh, pixelator in there. And I do want to use a map range for this. So I'll plug the noise texture into the map range and we can just preview that right here. This looks a little too noisy. I want uh, the scale to be smaller. So I'll set that to like two and just turn the detail down. So now we have these big white parts and I know that the black parts are going to equal zero, which means that the black parts are going to be completely unaffected because when this is at zero, that means that um, our texture is completely unaffected and the white parts will become more distorted because they're closer to one. So we can just plug that in here and look at our image. So now that we have a mask in here, you can just control the strength with this multiply node that we made before and you can see the more I drag it into the positive, the more it gets dragged upward. And the, when I drag it into the negative, stuff starts getting pushed downward like that. Um, and one thing I also like to do, so this isn't repeating, I like to change this from repeat to extend. And it basically just takes whatever pixel is on the edge and just extends it to infinity like that. I like it when it's uh, in the negative. I usually set this to something like negative 0.5. I think that looks cool. One thing you can do is uh, move your mask around. So I like to do that with just a, a mapping node right here. Um, and you can change the location, rotation, scale, and all that. And if you move that on the Z, your texture will morph around like this. And I think that's a pretty cool effect when you actually run it through the image like that. And if you want this to go by itself, you can animate it. One thing I like to do is add a driver with a hash or the pound sign and then frame like that. When you press play, this will match the, uh, the frame number right here. You can see we're on frame one. And if I press play, um, this is at 26 and that's at 26 now. So they match each other. Uh, and I can make this slower by dividing it. So I'll divide it by like 100 or something like that. And when I press play, it'll just go by itself now. And I think it's a pretty cool effect. Another thing you can do if you don't want everything to be pixelated, but only the distorted parts, um, instead of plugging in the uh, pixelated vector right here, you can plug in uh, just the window. So we can plug that into color one. And now uh, everything is clear except for the distorted parts are actually being distorted still. And they're using that like pixel uh, size, the resolution right there. Uh, if you want to be able to quickly switch between the two, you can create another mix RGB right here and plug the uh, unaffected window coordinate in and plug the pixelated window coordinate in right here. And then you can just use this factor to switch between the two like that. And I think it's nice to have this option because if you want some like really big pixels, if you go to like 32, um, your image will sometimes be so pixelated that you can't tell what it is. So it's nice to be able to mix that with the actual regular image. And if you set the resolution to the same resolution that you're rendering at, you'll get that normal pixel sorted kind of look, even when you render it, where each pixel is being stretched separately. So yeah, that's pretty much the basic effect. You know, what other you can do plenty of other things with this. Like if you want, you can use um, a different texture for the mask. Um, if you don't want to be using this noise texture, you could use something else like a Voronoi or whatever you want. You can even use an image texture. Um, and one thing that I think is really cool is uh, being able to just draw your own directly in Blender. So to do that, I'll just do that really quick. You can just bring in an image texture right here and I'm just going to replace it like this and I'll just reroute these and plug it in directly like that. 
So now this is our mask, just this image texture, but there's nothing here. You can create a new one like that um, and just set your resolution. So I'll, I'll set the width to, uh, you know, the same as my image. So 1920 and the height will be 1080 like that. So now that we have our new image in here, you can just select your plane and change this from object mode to texture paint right here. And you can just draw whatever you want your mask to be in here. And this is a little stretched right now and not following exactly because this is using the UV space, which we changed around with nodes. What you could do is just switch both of your pixel groups to uh, zero. So they're both using UVs right now. And you're just gonna wanna uh, change this also. So it is being pixelated. And if you want this to be not distorted, you can just change both of your uh, height and width to the same number right here. So that would be just 1080 and it'll stretch it, but um, it'll allow you to paint on this properly like that. So we can actually just paint while we're looking at our image right here. So if I want just the eyes to be distorted, you can just paint on the eyes like that. Um, and you can make this softer too. I mean, this isn't really a texture painting tutorial, but you can make it softer, um, change the radius, uh, and you know, turn the strength down too. So if I'll set this to like 0.2. Oh yeah, and in here too, um, sometimes it'll switch to having you paint directly on the image, which you don't want. You want to use that image right here, which is just name untitled. So you can use that to paint whatever parts you want like this. And this gives you a lot more control if you really want it. And then you can just switch everything back when you have it the way that you want it, and it should work fine. It's nice being able to uh, have this in UV space so that you can actually use it and look at it from different angles. Um, like if you actually wanted this to be in your scene as like a TV or a wall or something, it makes sense to use UV instead of window. And window is good if you're actually just trying to render an image out and use this like a filter because you know that this will just match exactly and be the correct shape so that when you render it, um, you don't have to worry about lining things up, which is pretty cool. So that's all for this one. Once again, you can get this node group on Gumroad as well as some other stuff. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.